Hi! Today we're going to be diving into this month's Art Snacks Plus box. Mm. We're going to open it up, find out what's inside, and try to make some art with the contents. Let's take a look. Alright, so inside we have a little bubble wrap bag, and inside that bubble wrap bag we have these things. This is a menu listing the art supplies that are exclusive to the Art Snacks Plus. And then this is the menu that lists the art supplies that are in the regular Art Snacks box for the month. So this is an Art Snacks Plus exclusive. It's a set of four Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens, all in the color black. And they are four different sizes. The four nibs, we have brush, soft brush, soft calligraphy, and one five, which is a bullet. The other exclusive item is this watercolor paper. It's eight by eight inches, and I really like this brand. It's 100% cotton. Oh, and it's actually a watercolor block, which means it is sealed on both sides, which is to help protect from warping while you use it directly inside of this pad. And then when you're done, you can remove it and you'll have a new sheet underneath. So it looks like we're going to be maybe working with water or watercolor, although I've yet to see anything yet <laughs> besides the paper. So maybe there's something in here. Okay. What are these beasts? Faber Castell watercolor marker. Okay. I like how the marker flutes on both ends. This is the color Indenthrin Blue. Is that how you say that? One side is a brush. I'm guessing bullet. Yeah, bullet on the other. And then we also have one in the color India Red. You can kind of see. Same nibs. There's also a pencil inside this box. The a water soluble one. Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna want to mix that in. It's like a graph, it's a water soluble graphite, and usually those are kind of muddy looking. But maybe if we erase it first and then apply the watercolor on top, it'll be less obtrusive. <laughs> what is this thing? But look at the end of it. Can you see that? That looks so funny. Get out of here. So this is the Zig Clean Color Dot in the color Platinum. So one side has a very small bullet nib and the other has this funny <laughs> little ball. It's like a... I've never seen a marker with that on the end. <laughs> it's like a blob. I don't know. So it looks like it's for doing some kind of dot. So you can see like on this side, there's a graphic says it's a 0.5 millimeter bullet. And then on this side, there's these big dots. Oh, we have the sticker. It's not the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> and finally, like you can't, <laughs> it's like invisible. Do you see it? Do you see it in there? It's a paintbrush! So this is a number two round Princeton Glacier paintbrush. So you can see how fine point that is. If it wasn't made out of a brush, it could cut you. I bet that's why it's called Glacier, because it kind of looks like it's made of ice. And that's everything in this one's box. I'm kind of... Hmm. Let me, let me dive into the literature here. Oh, these are actually filled with India ink. I didn't know that. Traditional India ink, pigmented, very light, fast, and can last over 25 years, waterproof. So we can use those for like line art. And then we can use the watercolor art supplies on top of that. Blend your strokes with water to create soft and vibrant watercolor washes. So apparently with a water soluble pencil, you can actually erase it after it dries. We're gonna have to test that because I don't think that's always worked with some pencils. I could be wrong. But if that's the case, that'd be kind of cool. Let's go ahead and move into our watercolor block and really swatch the crap out of these supplies since this is supposed to be heavy duty paper. <laughs> go ahead and use these first so that we can test if when they dry, they don't smudge. I didn't know they had India ink in them because that might these might be really handy when Inktober comes around and I get out my inks for like finer details and things like that. Oh, yep, that's, that's squishy. <laughs> So you're able to have a lot more variation in your line width with that one. And then this is the soft calligraphy. So it's got a bit of a chisel to it, but it's soft so you can like vary it as you go. <laughs> Gotta try this funky dot thing. Yeah, so I guess you just... Oh, you can... Oh, it's squishy! <laughs> so you can do different sizes. That's about as small as you can go and then... That's about as big as you can go. That's a lot of variation, I'd say. This is fun. I don't know how you would use it like 
like in practice. But look how many dots I did. <laughs> Adding details to this. Okay, this is definitely water-based. Just you can tell by the way it's layering and kind of scratchy with the paper. It doesn't glide as much as like alcohol-based inks. Okay, that's interesting. We'll have to see how that interacts with like the water supplies, the watercolor markers, because if these lift that even after it's dry, I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna use that. I also don't really care for the color. Let's see, well, let's swatch them first. Okay. It's like a burnt red kind of color. Making it fine points too. And then if we use some water on this with our little paintbrush, Ooh, this is a dark blue. Now we're really limited in our art supplies here. So I think it's going to take a little bit of creativity to figure out what to do with these. Oh, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> I was like spreading water down and then the color actually like would spread upwards to where there wasn't any. Let's see what happens with that dart. Dot marker. Okay, it doesn't lift after it dries. Good. What about these? Okay, it does look like it's smudging a little, but we might just have to wait for it to dry a little bit more. Because it's, it is India ink, and India ink is a bit of a slow drying medium. But even after, what, it's been like two minutes maybe? Maximum. It's not spreading too much. Oh, I never mentioned that there was a snack in the Art Snacks box. It's a little cherry dum-dum pop. I kind of feel like eating this right now. Maybe it'll fuel some creativity. What if I dip it in here and try to draw with it? <laughs> Oh, you, I didn't try this pencil. Wait, 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 wait. Pencil. Throw some water on there. Ooh. You know what? That might be the art supply we want to use the most of. I do want to see what happens when it dries if you can erase like it said. But if we make an illustration that's like rendered with pencil, and we can get different tones by the amount of water we add and then use the colors and maybe the dots as just like accents of some kind. So while that's drying, I'm just gonna like test out the art supplies like in practice and just see what happens with that rendering idea. So we'll just go in and throw something in here. Maybe someone kind of scrunched. Something like this. Maybe bring this arm down. It's so strange. Lately, I've been having small head syndrome and I've suffered from big head syndrome like for the last 10 years. So I don't know what happened, but um, it's, it's, that's what's happening. It's funny. I actually get a lot of comments where like, you never eat the candy. So this is for those guys, I guess. Let's go ahead and try and make the head Proportionate. Something doesn't, something seems really stiff about this. I think it's the back. We need to pull this knee more. Uh -huh. it does not erase very well when it's dry. So I don't know how much better you could get away with this. Let me see. That doesn't really erase. You lied to me. Brush your pencil marks with water and watch them melt onto the paper. Once dry, you can use an eraser to add highlights. I mean, maybe it's not dry. Maybe this isn't an eraser. Hmm. Maybe it's not dry. Give me the benefit of the doubt, but it's not even really erased when it is dry here. So, hmm. I'm gonna try a second sketch layer up on this. See if I can loosen it up. I think I had it in about the right spot. I'm using this reference here. Gene Seberg's been showing up on my Pinterest feed a lot. I guess cause that movie's coming out. <laughs> now I'm stealing her pose. <laughs> All right, I think that works out. I don't know if it's any better than the first pass, but it has more time in it. <laughs> this has gotta be dry by now. Will you erase? No. <laughs> I've been lied to. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to really do quite what I thought I was going to do. So luckily we tested that. Because <laughs> otherwise I would have been really bummed when we like, we're actually doing the illustration. Put this hand here-ish. 
Which, what if this does this work on this? I mean, it's sort of erasing a little bit, but only where it's super dark. And like, that's probably not where I'm going to need to erase, you know? Because I'm probably going to be thinking consciously to make it lighter where I want it to be light. And then I would just need this for highlights, but it's not quite popping the way I want it to. Let's go throw the face in here. So basically my idea before this didn't quite work out, I'm gonna still go through it just to see if maybe it works better than I think it's going to. Cause maybe it just needs to be darker if I want it to erase. So just use a lot more of the pigment from this pencil. I also don't know what happens if you use the watercolor marker directly on this pencil. Not much. <laughs> so let's go ahead, grab this little paintbrush and a little bit of water and see what I can do with the face. So like if we want the lips darker, we'll smudge that around. And maybe the eyebrows. It's kind of interesting, you can get like little strokes and it looks like pencil. But I'm using a paintbrush. And then when that dries, you're supposed to be able to erase for some highlights. But we will see. You know what I haven't used? I haven't used these things. Shoot, I totally forgot about these. <laughs> uh, that didn't go into any of the planning. This is kind of cool for like these stripes. So then you can create almost like a checkerboard plaid pattern. There we go. I added some tone with the water. It's crazy how well that kind of works, but not really the vibe I usually go for. Then I thought for like these you could do some kind of accent but now I kind of lost my urge. <laughs> Maybe just tone up some colors. Not sure. I'm not feeling entirely inspired by the colors I guess. And we also have this thing. Like how am I supposed to use this? <laughs> and we have the watercolor block which makes me think we should be using a lot of water to really test it. Ooh, here we go. This is an interesting way to add more blue. Hmm, what if we sketch something with this? It's a bit too chunky, isn't it? <laughs> then when we add water, it'll stretch out the blue. Kind of similar effect to what happened here, except without muddy gray. I'm just not a huge fan of like graphite color. I, mean, I think that's what's really turning me off about this whole thing. Sure. Maybe we just need to focus more on the colors and maybe the solid black of the liners. I bet if we add water before the brush dries, we could smudge that out a bit. I don't know. It's all just kind of messy. Not really my preferred style. The way I would probably do it if I don't want to be too creative <laughs> would be to just sketch with the pencil and then you erase that slightly, which is all you can do really. Uh, then use the artist pens for some line art. Then when that dries, I can go over it with some color and maybe even like just mix these straight with water, throw in some blue. That way I can sort of mix the color and just use it like straight up watercolor. Oh, that looks so good on this paper. Paper really handles the washes so beautifully, even when there's a lot of water mixed in. Maybe use straight blue for these earrings. Yeah, something like that. That would be my gut instinct. And it's what I would be most familiar with. And I do think it works pretty well, but I feel like it's not using, I don't, I mean, I was gonna say it's not using the full potential of the watercolor marker, but like, what is the full potential of a watercolor marker? <laughs> like, how are you supposed to use it? Do the same thing again, but with the red. I wish the pencil erased a little bit more than that. We'll work with what we got. Look at that man. <laughs> I gotta celebrate every time I draw a dude that it doesn't look absolutely repulsive. Because for a long time, that's all I could muster, you know? It's a small victories. <laughs> you can also mix it to get purple. And that way we have three colors. I do think this shows off the paper a little bit better because I'm mixing this with a decent amount of water and it's handling it really nicely and the pigment sits on it. Use this for shading. 
Interesting, interesting. Can layer it too as it dries. Forgot to give him clothes, so just had to make do. <laughs> she looks absolutely disgusted by him. <laughs> Still haven't used this thing. Works really well for patterns. That these are definitely the most my style, and it's because it's kind of following most similarly to my process, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I like the idea of one character being blue, one character being red, and maybe if they're like interacting in some way, you'll see the blue on one side, the red on the other side, and then in another place, blue on one side, red on the other. So if I drew like a thumbnail, what if we had like two characters? We'll make them kind of lovey-dovey. <laughs> that way we, like this is an arm coming around, it would be one color. Then this character would be a different color, <laughs> like a prom photo. Hmm. Could follow the theme of this and make it sort of 1950s inspired. Oh yeah, if it's 1950s, we could give her like a polka dot housewife dress situation. And ooh, we could give him like polka dot pants or something. And then we could do it in like this sort of style with the line art and the color washes. Do we want the girl to be blue or red? So maybe if we, oh, but I have red on here. We'll use red for now. <laughs> Hashtag lazy artist. And use the polka dots, I guess. I think I'd probably leave the girl blue just because this is a very cool gray color. If it was a warmer gray, actually what we could try is layer this only on the dots. So use the dots as a stencil and then fill them in. <laughs> She looks like she's holding this giant head. That's really weird. <laughs> and then if I'm drawing the characters a lot bigger, I think we will have more opportunity to use this. I'm like itching to start the next page, but I like want to take advantage of this before I pull it off the block. Like if there's anything else I want to test out. <gasps> what if we gave them a child that's painted with this color? Would that be just too cute or? I mean, it's a little gray for a child. <laughs> But the way they like mix together and create a new color. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a pretty little purple, like a very muted light purple. How do we get this off? It said it comes off easily. Probably supposed to wait for it to dry before removing it if we really want no buckle. But since it's just a swatch page, not too concerned. There we go. <laughs> Got it off. Now we have a brand new sheet. It's a really good opportunity to use this guy too. That's not till the next step. All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna use the pencil and I'm gonna try and be really light with this just because it doesn't erase the most. One's looking down, one's looking more up. Your feet would need to hit here. I don't want them any lower than that. That's the point of no return. Not the tallest people on the planet, but neither am I. I guess we could have them holding hands like here. There's space for that. I think little heels would be cute. I think his head's too big. Let me try shrinking that down. He looks kind of angry. Shoot, shoot, shoot. There's always that point of like uncomfort, discomfort, discomfort. There's always that point of discomfort in a piece. Sometimes you just gotta push through it. Sometimes it means you need to make a change. <laughs> but I'm not seeing what I need to do. I think what I liked about these was they're all a little bit more simple and like this face is a little over rendered compared to these and I really like these so maybe that's a change I need to make. No 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 no. <laughs> no 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 no. Maybe bigger eyes? No 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 no. <laughs> that's more similar vibe to these. <laughs> now she's doing like a shy look away sort of situation. He looks a little too... No, I'm not gonna use that word. Angry. We'll just stick with angry. <laughs> so I'm gonna raise the eyebrows up a little to give it a more innocent look. There you go. I don't draw two characters <laughs> interacting all that often. So I'm really trying to make it make sense. <laughs> Erase it. So we can add line art. Let's try and keep it kind of simple, I guess. Simple shapes. Not quite fine enough. I could try and use the brush if I want to get finer points. But at this point I kind of like the even look of all the line art being kind of the same. So I think I'll stick with it for now. Should I get this shoe to actually look like a shoe not just a blob? I think. <laughs> 
Now this handbag here, which looks something like this. So there'll be a little bit of thumb up there. And then fingers. Ta-da! So basically they have to be hand holding, which is the hardest hands to draw. If I go back to the pencil, I think her hand should come down this way a little. Which means his is coming up like this. Does that make sense? <laughs> Do I want him like this? Like this? Like this? Ooh, that's awkward. I think that works. There we go. Your tink dish works. I could also even throw her hand up here. Now let me try to erase as much of this as possible. Don't want to infect interacting with the colors. So I think next step is to mix some colors. The red really won me over here. So I'm thinking she might get to be red and he's blue. Spray a little water in there. Mix it all up. The scarf does not match the dress I gave her. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Like I gave her a scarf in her hair and a scarf around her neck like she's dressed for school. He's wearing like a super fancy dress. Well, I'm living with those consequences. <laughs> and then I want the hair to be a darker red. I'm just gonna take a little bit of water from the already red and add it to this. That should hopefully be darker. Yes, it is. Ooh, look at that color. Whoa. It's kind of cute. I really like the thick line art with the flat color style. That's exactly what I was going for. The more marker, like ink, that's not desaturated with water, the more like grainy it looks. I don't know if that's obvious. I can kind of feel it, especially when I'm trying to smoosh it around with a paintbrush. All right, should we switch over to the blue for now? Oh, I should have done blue first because of my I'm right-handed. That was stupid. These are things you're supposed to think about, you know? <laughs> what do we want to be blue? I could follow like the same sort of theme with her. Color in like the tie and the hair. Might darken that up. Gotta find a way to like maybe add a little bit more shading down here. Since there's gonna be a lot less light. Whether that's layering it again once it's dry or maybe using the graphite from the pencil. Oh wait, his little fingers back here. Just a little color. I think I want to color this collar section with a straight brush pen. Okay, that gives it a bit of a vintagey vibe. Maybe darken the bottom half of the hair so it doesn't look like such an old man. And then we could try and darken down here too. The only regret was adding a little shading to his temple. <laughs> Other than that, it's looking pretty good. We do have to add the polka dots to her dress. And I think I'm going to do that thing where I layered it with the red on top just to warm up the gray. Okay, let's grab our little dot tool. Blob blob. Just try to keep them pretty separated, I guess. Try to keep them a cohesive size. It's hard when you get to the edges. Soon we'll have a nice pattern. There we go. <laughs> Next up is layering the red on the dots. This is going to take a little while. Some are darker than others. What I might be able to do is use like that purple color by mixing the two and use that for a little bit of shading down here. I think I'm going to use this straight red for the shoe. But yeah, I like that. Not quite enough contrast right here with that scarf. So maybe I will darken up this hair with this as well. Okay, now I kind of want to add some kind of background, like a heart or maybe dots since we have dots in here. But I was thinking if there's like a circle behind them and then I color this half of the circle red and this half of the circle blue, and then maybe it'll be purple in the middle. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm gonna need a lot of this. Probably need a bigger paintbrush too. For this to look its best. Or we could go with a really pastel color. I'm gonna just freehand this though, because I'm living on the edge. That should do it. That should do it. I guess I didn't need as much as I thought I would. <laughs> okay. And then we need the blue. Twist just around. Picture our circle. Freehand that 
baby. This one's a little bit more streaky. I think it's because I didn't use as much water. Now, what about this section right here? Should we go purple or just sort of mix them as we go? Instead of mixing the purple earlier. It's a thing. Ooh, what if I use black for her waist? Then it brings out the black and like his jacket thingy. I don't know. I feel like it just needs more black. That's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Maybe make this black. Front part gray. So that it's not too <laughs> blendy in with the back piece. Mm, there we go. The circle symbolizes a clock with the lines and the dots telling them how much time they have before the date is over. Ooh, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> it's cute. Definitely limited by the art supplies with this one. So here's what I came up with, but I don't think I'm gonna go out and buy more colors of this. Not really something like, I don't know what the benefit really is for using these versus regular watercolors. Cause like, I kind of just turned them into regular water canners. I mean, obviously you can do these sort of things, but like, <laughs> and you can like use the brush tip color in like the shoe that I did there. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll have more information about Art Snacks in the description. I want to thank Art Snacks for sending me this box out to try out and share with you guys. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!